Hey, oh, welcome back to the channel, and man, we got a nice knife to review today. Pretty cool knife there. If you're not familiar with that, that's Battle Axe brand, made by um, Cooper Cutlery. And we're going to tell you all about this knife, the down and dirty, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, if you'd like to hear more about this knife, go ahead and check out the video. You got it? Yeah! Oh, I'm a dinner fly. Okay, mommy. I'm a dinner fly. Okay? Don't fall. I fall! Mama, I fall, okay? You can do it. You got it. How do you do? You got it. Hey, welcome back to the Fortified Castle. Hi to all my viewers. I uh, really appreciate you. Thank you for dropping in to check out this video. And uh, I hope you really enjoy it. How could you not? Look at that beautiful knife. So this is a um, Coke bottle. Some people would call it a beaver tail because of this big old tail it has on the end there. Um, but we normally call these Coke bottle knives. They're old hunting style knives. And um, this is um, uh, made from a new startup company called Cooper Cutlery. And um, I was really anxious to get my hands on one of these. Uh, they sell out quickly and they were sold out most places. I found this on... Um, uh, Chicago Knife Works. That's where I got it. So, um, we're going to take a look at this knife and, um, tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about this knife. Alright, why don't we, uh, start with a description of this knife. So, it is almost five and a quarter inches long, five and three sixteenths. Uh, it is a Coke bottle design, um... Because it kind of looks like a Coke bottle. And it's supposed to have a center swell here. You could, you could see how it swells out. It's not very uh, well defined. Uh, I'll give you a, a comparison. That is noticeable right there. It just swells out. And that's what that's supposed to do. So as the pattern goes, it's kind of weak. Uh, a weak uh, swell on there that that would be a criticism of this overall you'd have to look close to see that though and it does look like a coke bottle knife it's uh has a green dyed jigged um uh scales on it a nickel silver uh pins nickel silver shield nickel silver bolsters and brass liners the jigging on this is uh pretty good i, I don't know it's kind of kind of simple I, I don't know um it's it's fine it's just fine it just i don't know for some reason it just doesn't grab me um i think the die job on this is good Really good coverage on the die here. Nice uh, dark green in the middle. Uh, almost black at some points. You can see over on the other side. It's a little bit lighter in the middle. If you can see that. I bought this knife uh, brand new. From um, Chicago Knife Works. And then if you look at that. Really prominent clip blade there. Awesome little clip blade. You have some um, stamping flourishes in the blade. Uh, I don't think this is etched. It looks like it's stamped to me, although it could be etched. And you have the Conqueror there. If you look at that, uh, a little bit of the gold got in the black part right there. Overall, this is a really good job. You have a matchstick uh, nail nick right there. Um, 
very minimal swedging there it is rounded like it's hard to see let's see yeah you can kind of see it there very minimal swedging on it and let's look at the grind looks okay kind of sweeps out at the end I'll show you on the other side let's see come on there we go you can see it's get a little little wider on the end there and it's sharp so um that's the uh, pile side stamp winchester ohio 2021 we'll talk about that in a minute and you see the battle axe brand stamp right there and so as i said this is a cooper cutlery uh creation battle axe brand was a branding of a company back in the early 1900s they were only in business a couple years and um cooper is uh reviving that old brand really neat uh battle axe right there this is uh glued it's not pinned but really good job on setting it in so i've got you really close up there and you can see it just it look no gaps it looks really good so overall a, a really good looking uh knife there were some blemishes on here right there you see that now i believe that'll be no problem to bring that out uh, with some polish but it's there and it's right here on this end so i think when i put some polish on there that'll come right out really nice transitions all the uh, pins are flat the transitions on the flat sides are really good and flat you can see there's a little bit of gap in there between the bone and the uh, bolsters and let's see and on the spine of the knife it looks pretty good there's a bit on the corners here let me see snap in snap in on the corners here you can feel a, a little bit of uh uh sharpness you know it doesn't stop you it just grabs your skin a little um but that's kind of normal on a lot of knives uh, pretty good job so overall a uh, good looking knife um that appears to be made pretty good all right uh, now for the bad this is a one or two pull on this thing very, very light pull and if you just take it up really slow hear that very weak click in that and you can see it right there it just very lamely snaps in because it's a one or two pull so the spring on this is really light so I have uh, my queen cutlery and the pull on this is not great it's like a four or five but when you push it out you hear that thing snap in and if you push down on it you can hear it hitting the back already I mean it's got some spring to it and that's the bad in this knife this spring is just really light now it's not like, like this is not the only knife I've ever had that with. Um, you know, I've got a Baron Sun that way. has really light. I've got a couple other ones. You know, it happens. And um, it, it won't shut on you. So, and it won't open on you. So it's adequate to hold the blade, but it's just really light. And... You know you get a good uh, tang there so if this did close on you it's gonna hit oh, come on it's gonna hit your finger uh, and not cut you so um, uh, I don't know I'm sure for a lot of guys that would be a deal killer on this 
All right, guys, now for the ugly. If you look close here, so um, that's not the camera angle. You can actually see the liners over the, um, the scales, and that's because, let's try this. Hear that? So the liners are proud almost the whole length of this all the way they're just slightly proud you can see it right there and a little bit in the back maybe you can hear that i don't know whether really you can but really really slightly proud here um you can just barely feel it if you run your thumb across here but here it's bad it's really bad. And um, if you ever wonder what the big deal about transition is, I mean, you just feel this and right away. It catches your hand. Uh, that little bit right there. I'd say that's maybe um, 30 seconds or 230 seconds. But that's enough to catch your finger. And it's ugly. It's, it's not good. And also... Let me see, some of this bone, you see gapping in the bone on the side. You can see it right here. See it right there? So uh, all along here, pretty pretty good gap. There you go. You can see it really good right there. Now on the back, not so much. It's nice and flat on the back. But on this um, bottom side here, you know, not only are the liners not aligned properly or ground properly, but you do have some gapping on the bone. See it right there? All three here. So, what do we think of this? So, um, Cooper Cutlery bought the old um, uh, Queen machinery, at least some of it. Uh, I think uh, Bluegrass Cutlery also bought some, but um, they buy, bought a lot of that old machinery with the intent on uh, making um, uh, knives. So um, that was was welcomed by the knife community, as it should be. And um, I don't think uh, Cooper had any uh, knife making experience. I might be wrong about that. And the first run of their knives were, were not critically acclaimed. So they had a lot of problems. Uh, you could see a few problems with this knife. Overall, uh, this is a pretty well-made knife overall. Um, there is, uh, it does have a light spring. And you have this issue here where, where the, uh, the uh, scales are a little proud there. Uh, you could actually fix that on your own. Um, if it wasn't for those two things, this would be an awesome little knife. So um, the slight gap in there doesn't bother me a whole lot. Um, uh, you'll see it on on higher end knives also, um, other brands, and and it's it's not horrible. You know, it's just a very slight gap in on here. So overall, this is a good looking knife. It's really cool design. You know, the Conqueror. Um, they made a couple different models. They uh, have a regular jack and they have a trapper. And um, I only paid $43 uh, for this at Chicago Knife Works. So um, I don't plan on getting rid of this. It's in my collection. And um, it's pretty cool. However... Uh, this is not a uh, GEC quality knife. The other thing, I mentioned this at the beginning, and uh, we'll address it here, is you see 2021, and of course it's 2024. So I bought this at Chicago Cutlery. This knife may be one of the originals um, that that they were making. Um, where they were just getting 
their feet underneath them making knives. The family was. So that may account for some of these uh, discrepancies in this knife. Now, <clears throat> uh, I've seen reviews of these knives that were uh, a later period. And everybody says they're greatly improved and, and a pretty good knife. Uh, if, if you go to see Reisner's uh, website, uh, he has a little uh, prologue uh, to the uh, knife where he says that these knives are greatly improved from the original knives. So this is not that knife. It's not a 2024. It's not a 2023. It's a 2021. So uh, I can't really tell you whether the new knives are great or not. Um, because I don't have one. This is a 2021, unfortunately. And um, I kind of regret that. And the other thing it tells me is, um, y you know, these these 2021s are still around. They haven't been able to sell them <clears throat> all. And so um, Cooper makes these in, in uh, runs of 100. So this is one of 100. Uh, this knife right here and um, there are other colors and so if you had red scales it would be one of a hundred they did a hundred runs with the red scale and so that's that's how they uh, release these knives there's only a few websites that you can get them at if you go to Cooper Cutlery um, at his website he lists the authorized uh, retailers of these knives and you can go there when I did that, they're all sold out. So uh, another uh, bad, I would have to say, is uh, when you go to those websites, this knife right here is $175. Some are even more. So um, the trappers uh, um, range between $119 and $150. So... Um, would I go and get a 2024 release of these knives and pay $175 for it? Wow. Uh, I don't think I would, right? So this thing, uh, although it's a, it's a fairly good knife, um, I, I just don't see this as a $175 knife. I'm not sure that I would pay $175 for this if those just like if it had a strong spring on it and this these liners were perfect the knife would be a pretty good knife and would I pay $175 for this knife I still don't think I'd want to pay $175 for it so um, you can you can get these old uh, queen knives in the hundred dollar range sometimes they're a little bit more um, but you also can get them for a little bit less and um, these are pretty good knives they're not perfect either by the way so there are little discrepancies on this knife this knife has uh, gaps in the liner you can see it right there and by the way the cooper cutlery has no gaps in the liner so no light comes through here there's no gaps in the liner uh, this knife right here is a vintage knife pre-1940 by robinson um, and its pull is only around a five and <clears throat> you know i bought this for less than a hundred dollars so why would i pay 175 for that so uh, I think they're a little overpriced if you were interested in these. I'm not sure I would go that route. But, uh, you know, definitely an interesting knife I'll keep in my collection. Uh, I hope this gives you some type of base if you were interested in these knives. Uh, like I said, the new ones may be better. This, this is definitely an older one from 21. And, um, but it kind of gives you an idea. Uh, what the knives are all about and what Cooper Cutlery is all about. Uh, I would anticipate that they would improve on their knife making um, as time goes on and may have already done so. Uh, like I said, there's not a lot of 
videos on this knife and I kind of regret this isn't a new one but um, it is what it is um, so right now at Chicago Knife Works they still have uh, these the and trappers uh, for the 40 43 to 50 dollar range if you were interested in them I think uh yeah, I don't lament paying $40 for this knife. So, uh, pretty cool knife. Uh, glad to have it in my collection. It has a few problems, but for $40, uh, I, I'd buy that all day long. So, uh, thanks again for watching the video. Um, hope you found it informative. I hope it helps you out in the decision, you know, that you'll make when you go to buy these. Thanks again.